Hello, 60 seconds today. Moving away from the basics of motivation. Hello and welcome to the Urban Vitality Show. My name is John Limpus and today I'm delighted to have one of my clients with me. I've got uh, Helen Salmon. Hello, Helen. Hi, John. Uh, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice uh, to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Now, the reason I had Helen on is because I've trained Helen for many, many years and four years ago, Helen had what many would perceive as their worst nightmare happened to her. She uh, found out she had cancer. She has two young children. She's married. She lives in Chiswick and her whole world changed. And she took a break from boot camp during the most intense phase of the chemotherapy, but came back to boot camp quite soon after that. And we were having conversations during the boot camp at the end of one session about what we were grateful for. And when we all talked about what we were grateful for, Helen said she was grateful for the gift of cancer. And that shocked many people on the boot camp, and it shocked me a little bit. And uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, allow Helen to share her story and what she's doing with her life now. So, Helen, lovely to have you here, as I said. Um, can you just briefly explain, you know, you know, how you came to Chiswick, just briefly what your life was like up to now? Okay. Um, well, I, um, before I had cancer, I had been um, working as a lawyer at BBC for about 10 years. And then once I had my first son, um, I decided to stop working and um, stayed at home. And so about the time um, I had cancer, I had a second young boy who was uh, just uh, still in nursery and, um, and I wasn't working. And um, yeah, that was that was mostly mostly it. So my, my youngest had just started doing um, mornings at school. Um, so that for the first time since I had children, I had my three hours in the mornings, which was quite exciting. So you had yeah. time. You had time. Yeah. You were yeah. happily married, two young children, loving boot camp, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly everything changed. Yes, and so when I got this diagnosis. I remember I'd just been for a 5k run around the Serpentine and um, and I was feeling really good about myself and I got a call from the um, surgeon to tell me, you know, that uh, they had actually, yeah, he had some news and I needed to go and see him. And I kind of knew then, you know, what that would be. And, um, and it was shocking, but um, it, in a way, the first thing I did actually was um, kind of make it smaller. Um, in my head, which was kind of unusual for me, because up until then, I'd been the sort of person that was very anxious, and I spent a lot of time worrying about the worst that could happen to me and my children, um, always thinking that if I stopped worrying for a minute, things would fall apart. If I stopped planning and scheduling and um, and checking and double-checking things, and I couldn't let go, and I used to feel if I let go for a minute, then that's when things started to go wrong. So it was kind of unusual for me to, it was for, for me to have a, you know, I was quite surprised at myself. Um, but, um, yeah, my first, uh, my first reaction, I remember quite clearly, there was lots of anger to begin with, but my first reaction was to shrink it. It was only a small thing and it was all dealable with. Wow. But, so this is, as you'd said, you'd, you'd naturally been quite uh, an anxious mother and then the worst thing that a lot of women could imagine um happens and you seem to cope very well with it or you just you you, you shrink it you say the first thing was, yes that was the first thing and then um and then i remember um doing my making my son's birthday cake at the time it was I'd probably just been diagnosed, so we were just taking in the information, and I was making him a Power Rangers cake. And whenever I cut any of the pieces for the cake, everything just fit exactly. And I remember thinking, this is really strange. Like, I might not even know where I'm going to put this piece of icing, but I'll cut it, and then it will be the perfect shape for an arm or the perfect bit for the whatever it was. And I was thinking... I just remember being really struck by it. And then a bit later, um, I remember having this kind of inspiration, inspirational idea that came from within, which was the universe is a benevolent place. And this 
sense of trust just kind of came up in me and I didn't really know why but I just believed it. And this was during a time when there was a massive amount of uncertainty around your health, your future yeah. and stuff like that. Yes. With, do you mind um, me asking you know, what the diagnosis was and, and how the actual, you know, the, yeah. the tactics you used uh, yeah. to, to help get through that phase? So, I mean, to begin with, um, uh, when I went to the surgeon, he said that it was small and uh, it all turned out to be a bit bigger than he said, but it was sort of relatively small. I'd got it early. I'd only had a mammogram 18 months before. Um, and, uh, and, and my husband came with me, which, and he was a great support. And, um, and I just felt that, you know, I'd have surgery and then it'd be fine. And, and at that point, that seemed to be all I needed to have, and that was capable with. And then afterwards, they started talking about chemo because it'd been bigger than they thought and that sort of thing. And there was some resistance in me to that, a lot of resistance. In fact, both James and I sort of didn't want to go down that path. Mm. And we went to see a naturopathic doctor and uh, and he, and we had a good think about it. And we, we decided because I had children that really we couldn't take any big risks. We couldn't, you know, kind of say no to what the medical professional was saying because we didn't know at that time we didn't have any perspective on it and we didn't really have any medical knowledge. So we so we decided to accept chemo and then I just had the support of a naturopathic doctor. And mostly the support of my husband was there because he was the one who suggested I go to the breast cancer haven. He did lots of research and he found lots of, uh, he, he pushed lots of things my way that which were things that I could do to feel in control or, or empowered myself to affect my health. So... It wasn't just in the hands of the doctor. So I think yeah. that was a really important thing. I, I remember that. And I remember going round your house and seeing the amount of natural supplements. You had literally drawers and drawers full. <laughs> uh, and you were doing the chemo and it was tough, but you were also really attacking it from a kind of holistic, natural, as much as you could. Um, and I know your diet changed drastically um, yeah. during that period as well. So I had a naturopathic doctor who gave me a diet, and he was, and he he also uh, sort of prescribed all the supplements, and he um, and I, and then they must have worked because even people I didn't know would tell me that I looked really well, that I was glowing with health, and I didn't even know them, so they didn't have a benchmark, and they didn't know that I might back my diagnosis or anything. So so that, that he obviously you know knew his 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 it's his, 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 but. Um, and, and but there were um, challenges in that period. I mean, um, I think there's a lot of anger that comes up when you have a diagnosis like that. Mm. And um, and I remember things being quite difficult between James and I on that level. And I remember speaking to another woman who had been through a cancer uh, diagnosis, and she said she had the same thing. You know, diff uh, it, it put a huge pressure on her relationship. And so I went to see a therapist um, specifically about that. Mm. He was really helpful, and he helped me build um, sort of better communication with uh, with James. So that really helped. That was a big turning point, I think, too, because I think it's really important to have, obviously. So you had um, the diagnosis hit. You took your strategies. You attacked it. You you immediately were able to shrink it and kind of focus in on this challenge. And would there are many people who aren't fortunate enough to come through that challenge my own mother included who unfortunately died of cancer when she was 38 mm. you were lucky enough because I think no matter how hard you try with all the alternative stuff and there are some people who do everything right and still don't you know aren't that, that fortunate you were blessed enough to come through that that challenge and you said before you were very anxious mm you had the eye of the storm, as it were, this challenge. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, how, you know, what came to you believing that this was something you were grateful for? So then I, um, I think there were a number of things. Um, one, the major thing was um, I discovered um, 
at Breast Cancer Haven, they ran courses, and uh, one of them was a mindfulness-based stress reduction course. And um, and I knew that that was for me. Um, I didn't believe it could work, but I knew it was for me. And that taught me a way to, to change my way of being so that I wasn't so... It, it taught me that I could let go of anxiety. Can I just pause you there, Helen? You said, I knew that was for me. How mm. did you know that was for you? Because it said stress reduction in the title. <laughs> <laughs> So even though I wasn't working, yeah. um, I had two young children, um, which people, you know, it is stressful, obviously, but uh, uh, it was, you know, I, I did feel that I was enormous, norm, enormously and easily stressed. And, um, and the other thing was that I had, um, in the back of my mind, I, I had this, the universe is a benevolent place, where did that come from? And um, a couple of years later, I, um, someone pointed to me in, in the direction of um, Anita Morjani, and I realised that that I had read her story many years before on the internet, like six years before, and she was a woman who had a near-death experience, and she came back with certain messages, and one of them was to live your life without fear, and that the universe is a benevolent place, and that had obviously that had stuck in my in my unconscious somewhere, and so I think. Um, you know, living your life without fear is to be taken in the sense of in a peaceful way without stress, you know, as much as possible. So it's a, it's about sort of finding it, sort of maintaining an inner peace no matter what's going on out there. And that's basically, I think, what the mindfulness course um, helped me do. So you had that. So bef- And then and tell me, you know, where you are now and where, you know, what you're giving back and how you're serving people at the moment so um i think uh having done um having done the mindfulness course it taught me a new way of being and so i was able to uh basically you know go through a day and my priorities change completely you know i my priorities are just to you know have as much love in my life as possible so it's you know it's really meaningful time with my children where I'm present not worrying about the future or the past um just um being with people and um relationships you know all of that I I was confused about my priorities before I had cancer but once I had cancer suddenly they were crystal clear you know it's not about having a big house or loads of nice clothes or you know or fantastic holidays it's really about wonderful relationships and looking after them and, and being and having as much peace in one's life as possible and you can't always sometimes I will get upset and things will go wrong but even then I'm so much more present to it I'm much pro- probably less critical of myself and other people mm. and um, and I don't um, I don't get in, involved in reading the newspapers anymore I don't feed on uh, feed on bad news stories on if people gossip and all that sort of thing I just you know I just try, try to I don't need to try I just it just doesn't interest me anymore and I um, let it wash over me and um, someone I was talking to this morning was saying, telling me about this plane crash that happened and she assumed I wouldn't know about it because she knows that I, I don't read the paper so I think uh, hmm. you know uh, that that uh, um, but I, sometimes I hear things, you know. If it's big enough, you will. Yeah, sure. sure. And it's, um, I was just going to so, and that makes now sense because I think when people were here being grateful for cancer, which you said, and that was very recently after finishing the chemo, um, I kind of understood it, but I know a lot of the other boot campers have struggled to get their heads around it. Um, and so the quality of your experience after that incident and the people you're meeting and, and the interactions you're having and have been much, much, much richer after the, the episode with cancer is, and, and tell me just, you're doing, you know, meditation classes and what, what are you focusing your energies on uh, at the moment? Yeah, so I'm doing a, a meditation group. It's not really a class, but if yeah. the has come, we, we help them um, into it. And, and, and I'm finding that, I'm also doing healing um, at um, the Vahara and um, in a in a in a hospital that I can't mention, um, and uh, for staff there, oh. and and um, 
And I did it. So I did a two-year energy healing course, which uh, I found uh, really um, enlightening in many ways as well. And um, that taught me the power of attention and loving attention and how healing that is. And um, and I'm doing focusing. I'm learning some focusing at the moment. So I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating that. And I'm just sort of. I just find that I'm being drawn to things that are nourishing, and um, meeting people that are, are, are nourishing and um, interesting. And um, and and I just allow things to fall into place. I think find things do fall into place more. So recently, also we did something called the alignment with um, a, a very a sort of master healer called Tuaka Kelly. And um, and these things are sort of almost effortless. I also do I work on the committee for the Kent um, Kent International Healing Association. I've got a website for them. And um, so the truth is, you haven't really got a big plan anymore, but you know it's all going to be good. It's all it is all good, and it's all unfolding. It's yeah. all you know, yeah. That's great. Well, look, Helen, thank you so much, and I hopefully this will perhaps help other mothers out there who can understand you know the anxieties of modern life. And the anxieties of having so many things to worry about, uh, and uh, if it can help just one person, then it's it's been worthwhile. Thank you very much, Helen, for your time. Thank you. Sir.